after having the discussion on the foundation of environmental school now this is the time to move on to understanding the premises of environmental school as you know that the premises provide the basic assumptions of a particular school and this is in a way also the summary of what is the essence of that particular school there are let us have the premises of environmental school the first premise is about the environment presenting itself to the organization see that this is the organization and this is the environment faces the organization or organization facing the environment as a set of general forces always remember that here we are taking it symbolically actually this environment if we this is the environment this is the collection of many forces and it is now being presented and it is now before the organization is the central actor in the strategy making process if you really understand that strategy making is actually about the path or course or a way an organization takes to achieve its objectives remember that in way of its course there is one very important actor which is rather the central actor in this school this is the environment and it is actually the collective effect of many forces and it is directly facing the organization and the organization in making its choices has to account for has to consider or deal with the environment this is the first message or first premise of the environmental school let me repeat it the environment presenting itself to the organization as a set of general forces is the central actor in the strategy making process it's the collective representation of general forces which can influence the ability of an organization it is the central actor and it affects the strategy making process let us now move on to the second premise the organization must respond to these forces if this is the organization and this is the environment and it represents the forces and central forces and it affects the ability of the organization to take its path the second premise is that organization must respond to these forces there is no way that organization survives without responding to the environment or else be selected out selected out it is in the inverted commas this premise specially needs your attention here i hope that most of you are familiar with the theories in the natural science especially a very important theory which was provided which was given by a scientist known as darwin and it is attributed to him that he argued that the survival is for the fittest who is the fittest actually according to him in the environment only those species or those organisms survive which have a best fit with their environment who are the fittest and those who have the ability to best cope with their environment and those who who fail simply to cope with their environment they are selected out selected out what does it mean they simply die so the organizations the second premise of environmental school is this that environment is so important that there is no way the organization can survive without responding to it organization has to respond to it if organization does not respond or if it fails to respond or if its response is insufficient the organization is simply selected out i would draw your attention to the number of organizations in the past which were giant organizations 
which were so big organizations that it was believed that these organizations would always survive. These organizations are immortal. These organizations would never die. But history is evident that the organizations died. And these organizations died because these could not respond well to the changing environment. Environment around them changed. They did not read and they died. I can give you many examples, but I would restrict myself to the two examples of the two big organizations in Pakistan in the past. One was Biko, another was Pico. Biko was Pitala Engineering Corporation and Pico was Pakistan Engineering Corporation. These used to be big organizations in Pakistan, but with the time, these are no more. There are only memories of these two organizations because they died. Because they could not respond well to the changing environment. There is one example which is cited from the natural history. That there used to be dinosaurs, big creatures, big species on the earth. This creature remained, ruled this world almost for 100 million years. But these have extinguished for thousands of million years because these could not respond well to their changing environment. So these were selected out. Same is the case with the organizations. If they do not change with the environment, these are simply selected out. The next premise is even important. The leadership thus becomes a passive element for purposes of reading the environment and ensuring proper adaptation by the organization. The first premise talked about the role of the environment. The second talked about the response of the organization. The third is about a third very important actor. If you remember my initial discussion that there are three main actors, the organization, its environment, and the leadership. Here, leadership thus becomes a passive element. Why leadership is passive here? Passive in the sense that leadership actually can't do anything to stop the environment. The In response to the, with reference to the environment, it's passive. It has to accept environment as it is. And it has to do something with the organization to ensure proper adaptation. Otherwise, if weak leadership is there and leadership fails to create the fit between the organization and its environment, the organization is simply selected out. Human history, both natural and political, are evident on the fact that it was actually the effective leadership over the years or especially in the history of nations, in the history of organizations. It was the leadership which very well read the changing environment, made the necessary adjustments in the organizations and created a fit. And they created a fit in a way that they always with the change in the environment, changed their organization. And they kept an equilibrium, kept a balance between the organization and its environment. And the organizations not only survived, but also grew. And in those cases, where there was weak leadership, it could not read the changing environment it could not adjust the organization accordingly. The organization simply was selected out by its environment. And there are number of examples, number of examples. You can take the history of organizations even in your own country. In Pakistan, you would find out many organizations which were present elegantly in the past are no more in the present. And there are only 
memories of that organization. Same is the case with the organizations at the world level. So the role of the leadership is to actually create a fit between the organization and its environment. Organizations end up clustering together in distinct ecological type niches, positions where they remain until resources become scarce or conditions too hostile, then they die. Remember that in response to the organization, in response to the environment, the organizations actually operate with the like organizations. And with the like organizations, they create clusters, they create niche, and in their niche and clusters, they collectively respond to their environment, and they stay there as it is until the resources simply end, the resources simply deplete, and the resources deplete, and organizations do not change, they finally die. Conclusively, it can be said that the, there is dynamic environment, there is relatively static organization, there is leadership, organization has to respond to its environment, and leadership has to create a fit between organization and in its environment, otherwise the organization simply die, they are selected out. Thank you very much.